see if you can hear him today. Oh, never mind. Hello, everybody. It's me. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, he's getting up. He's schmoovin'. That's your boy. Oh, he's looking back at you. What does he think? Um, it's me. <laughs> it's After Worlds. I'm home. Uh, and I thought I'd do a little bit of a talk on the roster apocalypse. What's going on? Who's been tweeting? Who ain't been tweeting? Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a little sick. Everybody is, I think, who went to Worlds. So uh, sorry if I sound a bit like shit. Feel a little bit like shit, to be honest with you. But uh, that's fine. Been back to work a couple days. Um, travel back wasn't as bad as travel there, to be honest. Really wasn't too bad. It's like two hours faster, the flight back. I still, that is still crazy to me. And so is flying in a plane in general. You ever, uh, God, God, I'm, I'm on a tangent already. But anyway, you ever on a plane, you just look out at the hunk of metal, like out to the side, and you're like, yeah, how does this work? I'm not a smart enough person to really understand that. I know that it's fine. It's safer than traveling in a car. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? What a crazy way to start a video, huh? Anyway, should we chat? I've got a lot of tweets to go through. But first of all, we're going to have a look at... The article which lays out what's going on. We go to a different scene. So this is the season 10 uh, sort of guide for the star of the year's esports. This is still slightly off, isn't it? Um, yeah, basically free agency earns on January 29th. So rosters need to be submitted by 1159 on January 29th, and then a decision will be made on which rosters get accepted. Um, I wouldn't expect the information on which ones get accepted to come out straight away because they have visa things to consider and stuff like that. But hopefully it's pretty quick because teams obviously need to know in time to apply for the promotion tournament. I think this um, the applications for both of these will be at the same time, from what I understand. <clears throat> Or that's the way, I think that's the way it worked previously, right? You could apply for one or the other, or both maybe. But uh, yeah, I think teams will submit their rosters and then, yeah, they submit a roster. Applications are reviewed, select a maximum of six teams compete in season X, season 10. Um, this is a good note. I kind of like this. Depending on how competitive roster applications are, we may select less than six teams. We believe it to be in the competitive interest of the league to do so. So I don't know if this is because they don't expect to get I mean maybe this is they don't expect to get six teams that are outright better than the rest like they did this year like I think it was pretty clear which six should be accepted this year even if looking back perhaps the Scarabs wasn't wasn't as strong as you might have thought but they made it to the semifinals of Worlds just before um, right so it made sense for them to be selected Warriors and Valks played in last year the other six teams were selected and uh, yeah, this, this stuff's all the same as previously. Um, this is different. So for example, if the Eldritch Hounds qualify into the SPL, they could take their, uh, they could take their, their name with them. They could be the, the Hounds instead of the Valks or the Scarabs or the Warriors or whatever team, um, whatever team you would want to retire. Uh, and then there's a tournament. Only eight teams, double Elam bracket, top two to three teams qualify for SBL. So they are saying, they do seem to be thinking that either they'll accept five or six um, teams automatically into the SBL, which is interesting. Number of participating teams in qualification matches are subject to change depending on interest and competitiveness of applications. I think this year we should hopefully have more interest and more competitive teams looking to qualify than last year. And I think last year we had... 10 teams in this tournament, but some of the teams weren't especially competitive. No offense to, to the guys on that team, but like you had like an EU SOC level team in Thunderhead competing to get in the SPL, which shows that there was just a lack of depth in competition, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then it'll get broadcast Thursday to Sunday, 23rd to 26th of February. Exciting times. Uh, so yeah. I have thus far, oh, I wanted to do this tonight. I've thus far pretty much avoided spoilers 
uh, for rosters. So I don't know anything. So anything I say is just me saying it. There's no spoilers coming out here. But let's go through the retirees first. Panda Cat has retired and then typed cock afterwards, which is good stuff. What time was this at? Can I check? 6.44 a.m. Yeah, so this was at quarter to one Texas time on the 15th, which was um, Sunday. Yeah, that makes sense. This was, yeah, I, <laughs> the night after he got eliminated, <laughs> he tweeted this shit out uh, while drunk. That's good stuff. Um, Kivo Fred. Kivo Fred has also decided to retire. I think he'll probably play some SEC in, in Europe. I hope so anyway. I really liked what he brought to the game. You saw a lot of other teams picking up his uh, the sort of sports psychology team fist bumps and stuff like that that he kind of started popularizing in the league. He's had a lot of great moments and uh, Maxonomic will be a much safer sponsor now that he is gone. Great man, Fred. Hopefully he doesn't quit the game altogether. Same with Panda. I think Panda's planning on streaming. Okay, I don't know what this is. This is just Twitter. So that's good. Good stuff. Uh, so... So has announced that he will be roll swapping to mid. I think the one before that was supposed to be. Let me go. How have, how have I done this? I think this was supposed to be an oath tweet that I thought was maybe some nonsense. Yeah, okay, I'll bring it up anyway. Oath tweet. I think this is nonsense by the people replying. Who presumably know him better than I do. But that was him. God damn it, man. I don't know what's this. Okay, whatever. Stupid, stupid twitter. It's all broken. Anyway. I think it's just nonsense. I think you'll still be completing. We'll see. Uh, okay, so moving role to mid and LFT, uh, which is interesting. Makes me wonder what's going on with the rest of the Titans. There's a lot of people who have typed that they're LFT um, that I wonder I wonder what's going on with their team. So so LFT, Pagon, LFT decided that it was... Uh, that Smite's better than school, which I agree with. Fuck school. Play Smite. I'm for this. Really glad that we don't lose him. We only, we've only got him. We've only had him in the league for one year, and he's done so much impressive stuff. Um, I think the fact that he's LFT is interesting, though. LFT, SPL, I don't know. Um, does that mean that perhaps his ex-teammates have teamed up with someone else? it's very unlikely that you would pick very many mid laners over peg on. Um, if you're let's, let's say theoretically PBM scream and final decide to stick together, give it another go, pick up a hunter, um, and pick up a, a mid, like who would you go for? I think the only two, who are the mids in the league that you could consider at that level? I would say Paul is the one that I would put top of my list. If I were thinking about it, um, and then, you know, you could consider Big Man and Shinto also really great choices, but whether they would uh, join that team or stick with their own, who knows? And then you've got, I guess, Dardes as well is the other one. I know there was a previous season, I'm sure, where Dardes to the, to, must, it probably was the Dragons at the time, probably was the first year of the Dragons, uh, was, a, was a potential thing, but it, it never happened. And I wonder if this is the year. We shall see. Uh, no Cuvo Fred on that Warriors roster anymore. And I think that roster has probably run its course. Maybe you'll see two of those at most stick together. That's what I would expect. We'll see. Maybe you see like Nika and Vote, or Nika and Dardes, or Dardes and Vote, or uh, Neil and uh, mm, with Neil and any of those guys. I don't know. And who knows what Chuck's going to do. But yeah, I think that Warriors core has probably run its course. I hope it has anyway. I think uh, it's time to to try something else for those guys. You got the COVID year, and then I think this year was a, was a pretty disappointing one. Uh, Sino, so we got a few of these. I hope this is serious. Sino played fucking sick at Worlds. How good was he? Even in that last game in the final where he picked the Pele, it takes experience and it takes, you know, bravery to play that way when your tournament life and your world's life is on the line. He got in there. He got the fuck in there 
and he tried to win his team the game, which I have a lot of respect for. Um, he's also, uh, I've been lying and saying he was five foot four. He's actually pretty like normal height, like five eleven, six foot, which I uh, didn't know. I swear I didn't even mean to lie. Sometimes it just slips out. Uh, this is another of the fuck it, I'm back, lol. I think this one's serious as well. Uh, I think Baskin might be back. And he did get cut off at the bar, I think, at this point. There's a lot of drunkenness. Uh, and fuck it, I'm back. I don't think Haddix is going anywhere. I am interested to see if the Levi's decide to stick together. Um, I would suspect that the core would stick together. Maybe that's just like, you know, a stupid assumption based on the fact that they've been on teams together for a while and they, they all speak fluent Spanish. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe we'll see something completely new. Maybe we could see the shark return on one of the sidelines. I feel like he, he wants to get a third ring and a third roll though. I don't know. But anyway, Haddix is back. Whether he's on the Levi's or not, I don't know. Adapting. LFT. He's looking pretty good. <laughs> I love the anger. I love the suit. I love the, the socks. I love everything about this, this photo. Um, I love adapting. Glad to have him back. What a player. I think he'll have no bother stepping into the SPL in... Uh, Kivo Fred's place, so a jungler spot has opened up. Um, but, you know, was that a bottom two jungler spot? I don't know. Have you got now, uh, so you've got your your sort of, hmm, your top junglers, who have you got? You've got Panatom, Twig, uh, Scream, and then have you got Sino? I don't know. Uh, and who's the other, who's the, who's the other one I can't think of? Um, and Laspra. So those five, should they apply, will probably be considered pretty high up. And then you've got like adapting, looking for a spot maybe. Um, and then maybe some other people like, I don't know, Oath, for example, could be looking, I don't know, Johnny, if he wants to, I haven't seen anything from Johnny. Did I, let's, let's check it now. Let's go to Johnny. Pretty sure he hasn't uh, tweeted anything about LFT or anything like that. Just a crying face. And then all of his ranked streams is once a, once a week-ish. Ranked streams. He's on it. What a goat, though. Um, but yeah, you got to consider, like, adapting for Kuvo seems like a decent straight swap. Yeah, he should get in there. Uh, all the Valks seem to have tweeted that they're LFT. It seems like that team has decided to part... And now they're all LFT. I think uh, if they'd stuck together, they wouldn't have gotten straight into the SPL. So um, now they get the chance to, to, to maybe some of them can get on a team which gets straight in. We shall see. Uh, I think they all will go through them. But Benny tweeted, Kirmi tweeted, Aqua tweeted, Gamma tweeted, Sharks tweeted, and Wowie tweeted. They all tweeted that they're basically LFT. They want to play or, or coach in Sharks case. Um, so yeah, lots of people looking for team. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think this Valks team, like if they stuck together, they probably could have played in. But you never know. I don't know. It's difficult to say. And I think uh, people themselves and others would have been disappointed in sticking together given how lackluster their end of year was, not qualifying to Worlds and stuff like that. Um, they stuck together for a while. Uh, Coast. This is a man who... I think was worried about his ability to get a spot, but uh, I definitely think he will have options. I think he could well go straight into the SPL. Um, fantastic showing in the groups and in the, on the world stage. I mean, you can't really ask for more than, than you got from Coast. Just a, a guy who performs incredibly well uh, under pressure and performs the Penta kid uh, I think he'll be doing it in the SPI. I don't think he'll have to play in. I think he'll probably get a spot. Panda Cat has stepped down. Is there potential of PBM plus Vaporish Coast Lane? Maybe. You do wonder who who Mike would want to team with now. Who else could you look at? Maybe Vote. Um, maybe Stu. I don't know. I'm not sure who Mike would want to would want to team with now. It's a it's a bizarre thing to think about. PBM and not Panda Cat. And I suppose we did have PBM and Arkle. In like season six, so it wasn't that long ago. 
season seven? I don't know. Anyway, Coast, an option, and I think we'll get an SPL spot. Kona, uh, F F LFT for SPL plans, another guy who I think had a pretty good showing in the solo lane. Seems like it's more this uh, Highland Ravens team who are looking to compete and move over than the uh, Hex Mambo team. I don't think I've seen any of the Mambo teams say that they want to compete. I think they've all got other things going on or just don't want to move. I don't know. Uh, but it looks like Kona and Coast and adapting three out of the five on this team interested in moving. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I need to look up actually what angry is tweeted. Uh, Preds, LFT for, for play-ins, looking for a solo laner for play-ins, not wanting to go, well, not even, not thinking he can go straight into SPL, but uh, another EU guy who's looking to play. Uh, Sarpe looking to go into play-ins. I'm just going through all the people I've seen it. Ducky, uh, I think he means that he wants to play. He didn't, didn't say all that explicitly, but I think he probably wants to play either SCC or SPL. I uh, hope he would try and play in. Uh, Causey, uh, sadly going EUSCC only, so must not want to move or whatever. Uh, and Dardes, I've somehow got Dardes right at the end. Fuck, there was somebody who I wanted to look up after this, and I've already, oh, angry. Um, crazy two years, da 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 da. So this, this basically just made me think that this team is, uh, is Dunzo and Dardes. Maybe this means that he's thinking about chucking it in. I don't know. We've only two retirals, two retirees. I don't know. Two two retirals. I'll go with retirals. So I'm sick. Okay, give me a break. Two retirals so far in the off season, straight after their games. It seems like the decision was sort of made up for. Well, I mean, I know the decision was made up for Cuba. I didn't know the decision was made up for Panda before the event, but it must have been right. You don't just do that emotionally in the moment. At least normally people don't. So, yeah. Panda and Cuvo out, and then other people. I know a few other people were considering retiral, but I uh, haven't done it. I wanted to check if Angry's tweet anything. Uh, oh, Prime, get him in the SEC. Lots of retweets, lots of SEC people in here. Not LFT for plans, SEC though. That's a shame. I would have loved to see Angry in the SPL. I think he is SPL ready. What an amazing player he is. What a, what an amazing performance he had, despite all the difficulties uh, he sort of had uh, with ping and things like that, all the disadvantages he was at. He did so, so well. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think that's probably everything. Interesting things to think about. Which rosters do you think could stay together? In my head, Kings, although... I would just fucking say, I spoke to some of the Kings guys and they were like, world's winning rosters kind of default to sticking together some of the time and it's not normally good. I think they should stick together. You know, you can, they've just ramped up. They've not, maybe they're not finished ramping up. They brought in Yarkor, they brought in Harkor, like, what was it, mid, early phase three or whatever it was. And they've only gone up and up and up since then. And then they went on an unbeaten world's run. I think that this team not sticking together would be criminal. It's like sort of um, overcompensating, right? You should at least try it. Give it a spring split. You know, if, you, if you're shitting it up, if things aren't the same, cut it off there. But uh, I think you should at least give it a go. Um, other teams that could stick together, I think Leviathans had a disappointing worlds. Could they stick together? Yes, I think... Titans, like, definitely have the potential to stick together if they want to. I'm interested to see if that roster stays together. Presumably, it's not because Saw is moving to mid, which makes me wonder what's going on, makes me think maybe... I don't know. I think the Saw move to mid is super interesting as well because it's a stacked role. Um, nobody's left mid, so who have you got? You've got uh, Dardes, Pagon, Shinto, Big Man, Tings, Paul. Um, who am I missing from mid? Uh, Venenu, Benny Q, and Snoopy, perhaps, to compete with. Is Salt going to instantly be, be better than these guys in mid? Is he going to be picked up by an SPL team over these guys in mid? Is he going to end up on a top five, top six team? I don't know. I think that's an interesting decision uh, to be made. And, and calls, it makes it a lot more difficult for him to get in the SPL, in my opinion. 
Um, I think he was pretty clearly. I think he pretty clearly gets it in solo. Like who, who are the who are the solo laners that are looking for a spot or are going to take his um, Aqua scary? I don't think so. He at least gets top six. Uh, if six teams get in. Um, but yeah, an interesting one from Sot. Perhaps just uh, feeling a bit burnt out on solo. He does play an incredible amount of the game, so uh, maybe he'll be able to adjust easily. I think he's very, very good mechanically. But uh, he is a little bit reckless sometimes, which you get away with a lot more in solo than you do in, in mid, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, interested to see how that works out. I'm still feeling, I'm feeling that it's maybe time for Paul or Bear Mike. Paul, PBM, Scream, Vine OK, then they pick up a Hunter. Maybe Coast, maybe um, Vote. That's what I'm looking at. I think that could be super interesting. And then who knows where else people end up. Maybe you end up with like a Titans roster with like Nika on it. Um, I don't know. I do not know what's happening, but I'm excited to find out. I'll uh, keep my ear to the ground, get some videos made, maybe try and get some interviews done once rosters start to come out and uh, keep them coming on your screens on YouTube. Make sure and like the video if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you got the post-worlds blues or the post-worlds flus, I'm sorry, I'm with you. What an amazing event. So glad to meet everybody who was there. If you missed it this year, it was, I think, maybe the best Worlds ever, despite the, the games not being like the super most competitive games of Smite ever. Um, the atmosphere, like it was like we had two years of, of pent up fun to have, right? And we had it all. We splooged it out there um, and had a great time. I had a great time. Hope you all did too. Um, hope I wasn't too intimidating to get pictures with. That's it. I'm done. I'm going to my bed. I'm going to try and work again tomorrow. I should probably take a sick day. But you know we stay grinding. What am I talking about? Goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Bye.